Hey everybody, we're up here in Vermont with my friend Bill and Ben, and we're installing Bill's battery and inverter. So our power up here goes out pretty frequently, and uh, we're, I'm tired of uh, bringing in, carrying in water when the power goes out. So we wanted to set up an inverter, particularly for the well pump, but we have it now with a big battery behind us. Uh, that's going to be able to power the entire house when the power is out. Yeah, so I'm with Green Mountain Solar out of Hinesburg, Vermont, um, and uh, I was brought in to tie this in and make sure it was done right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think you've done a great job. We're, well, we're just finishing things up now, but we'll show you some clips of the install. Here you can see us installing Bill's batteries into his large cabinet. Now these are four 24 volt modules set up in a 2P 2S configuration. So he'll get 48 volts out. If you'd like to see more about how we're doing this wiring, you can check out some of my previous videos that I'll link to below. But we're paralleling up the individual cells and that's what the green wires are coming out the sides. Now on his own time, Bill insulated this with two inch thick XPS or extruded polystyrene foam. That gives him about an R10 on all six sides of this enclosure. I put a uh, two inch blue board all the way around it um, and then the plywood and then I have the front here on a, uh, a weather strip gasket so that it is insulated and air sealed so it's a very efficient box. <laughs> it should keep the batteries warm. There's a uh, seedling mat in there uh, that's uh, just uh, giving, it, giving it a little heat to temp. But it's a nice slow gentle heat not going to overheat anything. Yes. Bill has monitored the electrical usage for this uh, in the cold Vermont winter over the course of several weeks, and we have found that he uses an average of 500 watt hours per day to keep this battery at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, even in the extreme cold of the Vermont winter. So great job on insulating that box, Bill. So this is the on the Chargery uh, BMS. Um, so we can actually see a couple of different things from here, the total battery, uh, how charged it is, and then uh, you go down to looking at the cells and how the balancing is happening. The balancing currently is shut off, it'll, ha it'll turn on when the battery starts to charge. This is an un uninsulated shed? Yes. So that was a concern is that the batteries, you know, they really like to be between uh, you know, they really like to be between 50 degrees and about uh, 86 degrees. So that's kind of a, a happy point for the battery. So we had to put them on an insulated and a little, little heat, heated yeah. area for them. So Ben's doing the connections from the battery uh, to the inverter and getting it so that uh, when the power goes out, which it does fairly frequently up here, it'll automatically switch over to the grid. Uh, this is a uh, insulated uh, terminal block nice. um, and this is a transfer switch uh, so that the critical loads panel will be powered by either the grid or the inverter. <laughs> Yay! Didn't blow up. Nope. Nothing. Solar first. Okay. The other one you can do is solar energy provides power to the loads as a first priority. If solar energy is not sufficient or not there, uh, it will switch back to utility. So that's what I use during the okay. summer. Okay. So when I get um, my panels on, I'll probably want to switch it to that. Right. Yeah. 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 And you can play with it. I mean, <clears throat> it's but but so that's what I use in the summer. So basically, what I found is when there is any kind of voltage from the solar panels it switches over to solar. Oh, okay. Um, so you pull your battery a little bit in the morning and a little okay. bit at night. Yeah. But uh, oh, neat. that's that. Okay. So yeah. towards the inverter and then... Uh, 
we're going to simulate a power outage. This is my favorite part. I forgot okay. to label those. Um, <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. That was super fast. There's a power outage. Wow. So now you're on battery. Your whole house is running on battery. Nice. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the energy All right. Energy so energy. you're about to label these, but yeah. uh, what is this one? Uh, that's his range. And? Uh, the dryer. And that's the feed to the inverter. So now the inverter is feeding the original house box, which turned into the critical loads panel. And this one that you added turned into kind of the main? Correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. He does have a main breaker outside. So. I'm gonna go up and turn on the water because we want to see uh, if everything powers, the, if it can power the well pump. Okay, yeah, he's got a drop in pressure and then the well pump should kick on. There we go. Ah. So, we just shot up. It started the well <laughs> pump! <Yay! laughs> Manual transfer switch down here. Um, and what this does is allows us to run the uh, protected loads panel straight from the grid, uh, just in case the inverter fails. I mean, it, it does happen, you know, even with big expensive inverters. Um, so yeah, so when the when the lever's down, uh, the house is in UPS mode, so the, the uh, power is running through the inverter um, and then straight to the protected loads panel, but if the power goes out, it switches to battery right away. Mm -hmm. So this is the blue Chargery BMS, and we are plugging in the current sensor, which is inside the white box. The adhesive oh, fell off. I'm going to need to re... Because it's so cold up here. Yeah. It was, what, two degrees this morning, <laughs> Bill? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Fahrenheit, by the way. <laughs> so now this black wire goes to the shunt, which is inside here, to read current. These wires in the front, they go to read the voltage sense. This telephone wire is for the monitor. And on the back side, there's also a wire that goes in. That's the temperature sensor. So that's uh, this black wire is two temperature sensors inside there. Up here we have the monitor. And this is actually for the heated pad, which is inside. Looks amazing. Yes, I'm happy to have my new uh, system up. Uh, the day after we uh, hooked the inverter up, we, my wife had the uh, toaster oven on at the same time as the electric kettle and the inverter started beeping. Uh, even though we weren't using the inverter at the time because the power is going through the inverter, it didn't like that. So we've now switched it and now we're in bypass mode where we're basically bypassing the inverter and we'll turn it on only now if the power goes out. Well, a huge thank you to Bill uh, for allowing me to come up and video. Uh, multiple times over the past few weeks to do this and big thank you to Ben for doing such a fabulous job with all the wiring I really hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, please like subscribe comment and share